Good morning, everyone. Good, morning. Good to have you all out this Sunday morning. And as we begin, we're going to be singing number 413. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. <laughs> Stand 
in these days of slumbering and slipping, help us to stand true to you as only you can help us to do. For Paul could admonish by saying, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So again, thank you for this good group, those listening over the airways. Pray that we'll be encouraged this morning. Pray that we'll be challenged. Pray that our faith would take care of our fears. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So, <clears throat> back tonight at 6 o'clock for the evening service. This may be a two-part message, uh, depending on how long uh, the first part is. And uh, so we'll be back tonight at 6. And then September, we'll begin our Wednesday night services. September, we will begin in our Wednesday night service. Also, the Lord has been very gracious uh, for us and to us to give us rain lately to water the flowers, water the grass. We do have a sign-up sheet in the foyer, and if you're available to water the flowers, uh, there's no one at this time uh, signed up this week. So if you're available uh, to come by and do the flowers, to water the flowers, uh, please uh, do your part to do that. Also, remember that our church always sanitizes after the services. People come in, they wash their hands, we're practicing uh, distancing from one another, and uh, so don't be afraid to come to church, it's clean. And uh, also for those of you who have small children, uh, we don't have a nursery at this time, however, we do have a nursery room. So if you'd like to come as a family, have your children sit with you, and realizing that children can only sit so long, you're welcome, of course, to go into the nursery and uh, feed them, change them, whatever it needs to do, spank them. I don't know what you do in the nursery. <laughs> that was a joke. And, uh, and then, of course, you're welcome to come back in. So the nursery, we could have two in the nursery. And then, of course, the junior church, you could have two or three uh, mothers with small children in there taking care of their needs. But welcome back and come back. And uh, the Lord, of course, will take care of us. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. And this morning's message and then in the matter of giving uh, we're not taking an offering uh, but we're doing is of course they're offering envelopes at the back uh, the book table back there don't forget Baptist bread uh, don't forget sound the trumpet sound the trumpet is a tremendous article for the month of July you'll want to read that it speaks about possibly the demise and the fall of America and North America as we know it so again we're living in but the Bible says troublous times and perilous times, or about that momentarily. So uh, also, if you're not able to come to the church and uh, you want to take an offering envelope, we have some outside, and uh, you're welcome to take those, fill it out, put it through the slot. And also on the internet, Emmanuel Baptist Church, FT Mac, so abbreviated Fort Mac, at gmail.com, and you can uh, support the church over the internet. So I hope that you be encouraged this morning, again, in the matter of your giving, the matter of your living for the Lord. Why do we come to church? We come to church to be encouraged. I'm so encouraged this morning uh, to see you, to see your faces, and to see uh, what the Lord is doing in our lives. And we come to church to be refreshed, to be revived, and then go out into a dark community and to be water for a thirsty soul, uh, be bread for a thirsty, broken life, and then, of course, be light in the dark world. World. Okay, our Brother Dan is going to come at this time, and we'll do another song, and Lord willing, in the next couple of weeks, maybe the end of October, or October, end of August, uh, we'll be able to do some singing. So hum along, the Bible says, singing yourself in psalms, spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart. So for a while, use your heart to sing as Brother Dan comes and leads us in another song. Okay, we'll do our memory verse first this morning before we sing. So turn with me to the book of Proverbs. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 25. Proverbs 29 and verse 25. And when you found that, please stand with me. repeat our verse four times. Let's begin. 
Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be saved. You may be seated. At this time we'll be singing number 116. He leadeth me. God. 
the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter number 4. We could look at that song and preface that song and ask a simple question, is it well with you? Is it well with your soul? Uh, through the week, as you know, I sent out Bible verses, and normally if the verses that you get on the weekend, that's usually the message I'm going to preach from. And uh, so this week I've been encouraged about what's going on in the world. Uh, why do we come to church? think about that. What is the reason to come to church? Well, the reason to come to church is to encourage one another. It's a fearful world out there. And if you look at what's going on in the world, there's confusion. Uh, when we look at uh, across the border, uh, there's a little man that uh, talks about uh, what's going on with the infection of this environment, uh, of this uh, virus, and that the environment is in trouble and that we need to lock ourselves up at home, never come out again, never touch anybody, never hug anybody, uh, never have any fellowship. And uh, there's something behind that. And uh, same thing here in Canada with Miss Tan uh, giving information, wear a mask, don't wear a mask, uh, um, stay home, don't stay home, come out, don't come out. So there's all kind of misinformation so where does a Christian get their information from? Well, we get our information from the Lord. We look to Him and we trust Him. If you look to the world, it's a fearful world out, world out there. And so coming to church is elementary. Yes, we come to church. But why do we come to church? If you look at a week in your life, uh, at work, with relatives, with companions, with acquaintances, uh, and, the, and the conversation that's being talked about, whatever is being talked about, uh, people acquiesce to that conversation and uh, they want to know what someone's, well, this is my opinion. Uh, this is what I feel about the matter. Well, as a Christian, we have the Word of God. And because we have the Word of God, we can look to Him. Paul said, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power and a sound mind. I think many Christians are living in fear. They're living in fear about the future when we know our future is sure in the Lord. Paul said, I know whom I believe. I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. So as a Christian, if anyone ought to have the joy in their soul, they ought to be a child of God. But because of all the propaganda, all the information, by the way, I don't watch television. And I certainly don't watch the news media because it's so discouraging and moreover it's confusing doesn't matter what political party you may be with uh, or you may be for or you may support no political party can change the world only jesus can change the world so as we look here in first john uh, first john of course is the book about knowing uh, you can know that you're saved you can know for sure about going to heaven. Look here in chapter 5. Just look over the next page. And uh, chapter 5 and uh, verse 11. If I didn't know for sure that I was going to heaven when I die, I would be fearful. It would scare me. And I would worry about that. And years ago when I became a Christian, when I received the Lord as my Savior, I really had no assurance of my salvation. No one took the time to disciple me and teach me the things of the Lord. So years ago, as a young preacher, I was reading a little devotional written uh, by a pastor's wife, uh, Mrs. Uh, Oliver B. Green, and it was about no soul salvation, and that uh, little devotional blessed my heart, and from that day to this, uh, I have never doubted my salvation, and here's the reason why, verse 11. And this is the record that God had given to us, eternal life. How long is eternal life? Forever. And where does this come from, this eternal life? And this, notice, and this life is in his son. That negates a church. There's no church that can get you to heaven. No denomination can get you to heaven. In fact, there's a bunch of false prophets and false teachers, as we'll see momentarily, 
that are deceiving people and confusing. A person who's deceived, they're deceived. Uh, they're confused and uh, they have, of course, no confidence uh, because they're deceived and they're confused. But when you have confidence in the Lord, when you put your trust in the Lord, that gives you confidence and gives you assurance that our life is in His hands. And because our life's in His hands, we can be encouraged. Uh, we can stand up for the Lord and be faithful. Next verse. Two kind of people in the world. He that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God has what? Not life. Now why did, why did John write it? Verse 13. These things have been written in you that believe. That means trust, rely, depend, and commit yourself to Jesus as your Savior. Believe on the name of the Son of God. What do you have to say, John? That you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of of the Son of God. So that's important. Believing, trusting, relying, depending on the Lord. But notice the next two verses. And these are the two verses that solidified in my soul and gave me the confidence and assurance of my salvation. And from that day, almost 37, 38 years ago now, I have never doubted my salvation. Look at verse 14. And this is the confidence that we have in Dennis. No, not in ourselves, but in him. Uh, we don't trust ourselves. Uh, someone says, let your conscience be your guide. Uh, you can be in big trouble letting your conscience be your guide because Paul says that we can have a seared conscience. Let your heart follow your heart. Well, our hearts can deceive us. Jeremiah said the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? God knows it, and God searches the heart. And this is the confidence that we have in Him. It's all about Him. That... If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. So is it God's will that should be saved? Of course it is. Peter says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come repentance. God wants everybody to come to heaven. However, not everybody is going to heaven. Why? Because of deception, because of confusion, and because there's a devil behind false religions that deceives people and it gives them false assurance. And we know, and if we know that he heareth us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Now, the day that we're living in is an extremely confusing day. And I'm going to just hammer that for a bit because a lot of people are living with the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, notice the order, power, love, and a sound mind. So answer them, why do we come to church? We come to church to encourage one another, to bless one another, to pray together. Yes, and listen to a sermon, listen to singing, and participate in the songs, prepare our hearts, stand up for Jesus. That song back in the 19th century was very, very important for two teenage girls. There was a man by the name of Bob Ingersoll. He was an atheist and did not believe in God and would tear down God all he could. Now back then, obviously, they didn't have internet, television, and so forth. So people were somewhat ignorant. I don't mean ignorant in a negative connotation, but they were kind of ignorant of what was going on. And so they would listen to man. And that's what the Bible, the center verse of the Bible says, put not confidence in man, but in the Lord. Put not confidence in princes, that would be politicians, but in the Lord. So this guy, Bob Ingersoll, would get massive crowds and fill auditoriums, and he would give his comments about how God was dead and how you couldn't trust in God. And then at the end, he would take out his pocket watch. And uh, anybody know what a pocket watch is? And uh, so he would take out his watch and say, I'm giving God one minute. If God's alive, I'm giving a minute to kill me. And then he'd cut off the time. 10 seconds, 9 seconds, 8 seconds, 7 seconds, get down to 1 second. See, there is no God. God's dead. And people would applaud him. But up in the balcony sat two teenage girls. And those two teenage girls decided to stand up for Jesus. And they began to sing. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. You saints of the Lord, lift high his royal banner. And must not suffer loss from victory unto victory. His armor shall we lead till every foe is vanquished 
and Christ is Lord indeed. At the end of their song, the whole auditorium were standing at their feet singing Stand Up For Jesus and Bob Ingersoll was gone. So again, we need to stand for the Lord in these days of fear mongers and the people who are fearful. Now notice what John has to say here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why is that? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Now notice that's a capital S. The Spirit of God, that's the Holy Spirit. Every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And second, John, of course, talks about if someone comes to your home, they don't believe that Jesus is God come in the flesh, that would be Mormons or Jehovah Witnesses. They come to your house, don't even bid them God speed. Don't let them in your house because they're false prophets and they have a false message. And that message does not include Jesus Christ. So, verse number three. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that, of course, is the deity of Christ. Uh, many new Bibles, they take away the deity of Christ, that he's God come in the flesh. Very God and very man. And they don't want to acknowledge the fact that Jesus is virgin born, He's the virgin-born Son of God. That means he was born without sin, unlike us. We're all descendants of Adam and Eve, and therefore we're born with a sin nature. And that's elementary to Christians, but non-Christians, they never heard that. The Bible says, Wherefore is by one man, Adam, sin entered the world, and death by sin. And so uh, <clears throat> death passes upon all men, for that all have sinned. We're sinners by birth. We're sinners by nature because of Adam, but thank God for the last Adam, the Lord Jesus Christ who came and paid our sin debt in full, dying on the cross, shedding his blood, going to the tomb, rising again, ascending to heaven. And the next thing prophetically to happen is the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing has to happen. No fulfilled prophecy has to be fulfilled. We're just listening for the shout, and it could be today. Wouldn't it be wonderful, the 9th of August, the, and the 222nd day of the year, if Jesus came, we'd be gone. So we should live like he's not coming for 100 years, but we should look daily for his coming. And that will help you in your stand with the Lord. And notice what he says. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Year of God, now here's a tremendous verse to hold on to. Year of God, little children, and have overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that's in you. Who's that? That's the Holy Spirit. When a person becomes saved, turns from their self-righteousness, turns from their religion, and embraces Jesus Christ as their Savior, God gives us a new spirit. The spirit not of Antichrist, the spirit of God that comes and dwells in us, encourages us, instructs us, guides us along the way, helps us to be soul winners, helps us to be faithful. If there was ever a time, if there was ever a time to be faithful soul winners, if there was ever a time to be bold in our Christianity, in Acts chapter 4, the Bible says that the new Christians were bold in their conversation for the Lord and their testimony for the Lord. I'm not talking about brass, but bold. If anyone ought to have the encouragement of this world that has gone mad, ought to be a child of God. See, we don't live for this world. We live for a new world. That new world is when the Lord comes and we're going to be with him. That's something that gets you encouraged in the matter of the things of the Lord. And certainly a husband, a loved one, a relative, a parent, someone who you are associated with, if they don't know the Lord, it would be a good time to witness to them and encourage them about the things of the Lord. Where have you heard that it should come and now already is in the world? Verse 3, you are of God, little children, and overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Look, if you will, and the second John, verse seven. So I'm following along with the spirit 
of Antichrist. Not the Antichrist, but the spirit of Antichrist against God, against Christ. Uh, the world has totally changed. In just a matter of a few months, society has gone mad. You look across the border, cities are burning. People are being murdered. Businesses are going out. People are losing their livelihood. Chaos prevails around the world. Anarchy. Uh, you think of all the things that are happening that has happened in the last six months, seven months, now the eighth month. Your life has changed. Your life is different. And if you don't keep your heart fixed upon the Lord, you will fall into this deception that is happening in the world that uh, you can't uh, hug. You can't shake hands. Now understand that. And we're not hugging in the church. We're, this is the kind of hug we're doing. And, uh, but we're not hugging. And we're doing our part. But, but God is able. We're not being foolish. Uh, we're not, uh, we're, we are separating from one another. Uh, we're practicing distancing and so forth. But I am not going to be a robot to the government. I am not going to take a shot. They're going to do that. Before you go to school, you're going to have to take a vaccine. I'm not. Now, I'm not saying you to do for you to do what I'm doing. I have my own conviction. You have your, I'm not taking the shot. I don't know what's in the shot. And I'm trusting the Lord now. If anybody could be fearful about uh, intermingling with people, it could be Mrs. Glennon. Uh, she has uh, diabetes. Others have diabetes. Others have uh, the girls, uh, a couple of girls in our church, uh, they have issues with the asthma and so forth and breathing and, and you have issues, you may have heart issues or what have you, and so some people are susceptible. But the children are protected. The children are protected. Many children are protected. And if you get it, to be sure, there is a virus, but so is the flu. And people have come to this church and got me sick uh, with their coughs and colds and little girl that comes to our church and invariably she'll cough in my face. Uh, she doesn't mean it, but she'll just <coughs> and uh, cough in my face. And uh, over the years, I have gotten sick. Uh, people will <coughs> cough in their hand and they'll want to shake your hand or they'll cough in your face. Now, I understand all that stuff. And I've had flus and I've had cancer. I've had other things and uh, you've been sick also. But, but let's not take this thing like you're going to die. But if you die and you know Jesus, you're not going to a bad place. So I'm trying to encourage you. Now look at 2 John verse 7. For many deceivers, and there's the idea, deceivers. So, okay, I'm an expert on, uh, on, this, on viruses. Don't wear a mask. January. February. Don't wear a mask. It's okay. Uh, February. Well, you can go out, you can go around and, and fellowship. It's okay. Uh, March. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Now, August, wear a mask and then put a shield on. It won't be long till we become a church with a hazmat. And, and we'll, we'll be like Darth Vader. Luke, I'm your father. So I'm making fun. I realize it's serious, but it ain't all bad. Amen. So we come to church to be encouraged in the Lord. Amen? Amen? And if you don't come to church, and if you haven't been in church in months or weeks, your faith is not very strong. And you're fearful. And I want to speak to you this morning about that matter of fear and deception. For many deceivers are in the world who confess not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This is a deceiver. That's twice we have that word. Deceiver, deceivers, and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that you lose not those things which we have brought, but that you receive a full reward. Now go to chapter 2 of 1 John chapter 2. I'm just laying a foundation for us not to run around to be fearful. Some people are afraid of their own shadow. 
shadow can't hurt you. But some people are just, they're just fearful. And some people are that way, and I understand that. They're just fearful people. I get that. I understand that. And uh, so we encourage them. We're not making fun of anybody. But look at 1 John chapter 2 and verse number 18. Little children, it is the last times. Now think about that. We're living in the last times. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're coming back. But look at 1 Timothy chapter 4. We're coming back to 1 John. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Don't, don't lose me. I had a couple of men visiting from Nova Scotia and from New Brunswick. And they said they liked my preaching. So I gave them a dollar. <laughs> they said they liked it because they're hearing the Bible. Well, isn't that why we come to church? We come to hear the Word of God. We're encouraged by the Word of God. Did you eat this morning? <clears throat> so we have to eat physically and to take care of our bodies physically, but we also have to eat spiritually and have spiritual food to strengthen our bodies. And so we come to church to get blessed of the Lord. Now, if you went to bed last night with Hollywood, if you went to bed, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking at someone else. If you went to bed last night with Hollywood and Hal, and you watch some scary movie. Now, I don't know for the life of me why people watch scary movies. I don't watch scary movies. Like I said, I don't watch television. I may watch some things on, uh, on, uh, on the internet and so forth, but I don't watch scary movies. I don't want to look at those things. Uh, you go to bed at night and you're wondering, who's under my bed? <laughs> Years ago, I saw a, a clip in the newspaper. Remember what a newspaper was? I saw a clip, and there was a little boy laying on his bed and he was fearful about what was under his bed. Under his bed was this creature looking thing and he was fearful about that little boy. So we're fearful about a lot of things that never ever come to pass. Now look at 1 Timothy chapter four and verse one. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall want. Someone gave a statistic the other day 30 people, 30% 30 of people who used to go to church are not coming back. It was so good to see some of you this morning because I was coming this week to your home to take care of you. So I'm glad you came this morning. But think about that. 30 people, 30% 30 not coming back. And 15%, the statistic went, 15% will never come back to an independent fundamental Baptist church again. They'll go to a wishy-washy church. So just think about that. So if 30% of our church doesn't come back, that's devastating. I have never in 36 years of pastoring this church seen a time where there were so many vacancies. Now to be sure, in 40 some years of preaching, I've run some people off. Now, I don't wanna run people off, but we'll see in a moment why some people leave the church. It isn't always because of the preacher. But people leave. But I have never seen the exodus like I've experienced this year. And it's broken my heart. My heart is broken. And I pray for individuals. I pray for the members of our church. I pray for our church family. And I am broken hearted because I know that many of you are home fearful. You're afraid. You've listened, and I'm not being unkind to you and unloving. You've listened to all the propaganda. And, and because you haven't been in the sound of the preaching of God's word, well, you can listen at home, but it's not like being here, is it? I mean, here you can get spit on. And uh, here you can get close enough and, and uh, get, um, anyway, spit on. But there's something about being in the church house. There's something about feeling that spirit of the Lord. There's something about listening to these songs that speak to our heart. It is well with my soul. Who wrote the words of that song? H.P. Spafford, who left England to go to America to make a fortune during the time of the gold rush, made it, had his family come to be with him in California, and the boat sunk, and his four daughters drowned. His wife was saved alone, and as he was going back to England to pick up his wife, uh, when they got over the area, the captain of that ship said, we believe this is the area where the ship went down. And he wrote the song, It Is Well With My Soul. When peace like a river, peace like a river. Jesus said, 
My peace I give them, not as the world give it, but my peace. So notice now what Paul is saying here. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil, speaking lies and hypocrisies, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Now look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. We're talking about false prophets. We're talking about false preachers. Years ago, there was a man in the United States, his name was James Jones. He was born in 1931. The first time I preached the message in our church was in 1978. And the Wednesday night that I preached the message, I preached about the armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. Have your loins girt about with truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith. That's a big door to stand behind. Taking the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying with all prayer, having a helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. Praying with all prayer and supplication. And I preached that night. And that was in November of, of 1978. November 18, 1978. This man, Jim Jones, who was supposedly a, a Church of Christ minister, changed his name from minister to prophet. He took a bunch of people to Africa, to a place called Guyana. Hundreds of people sold their homes, their life savings they gave to this man. He was a false prophet. Did all kind of horrible things. You can look it up on the internet. I'm on match the unmentionable that this man did. But on the November the 18th, the week of November, a congressman from the United States went to Guyana because he had heard some stories about what was happening there, this cult. And that man, that congressman, never came back to America. They killed him at the airport. And the day that they killed that congressman, and some newscasters that came to see what was happening in Guyana. That November 18th day, 918 people died by drinking poison. 918. Almost 300 children. Why? They followed a false prophet. And that man ended up taking his life or someone took out his brains. 918 people died. Why? They followed the charlatan. So they're all over the place. They're out there. They creep into the church. That's what Jude talks about, the creeps that come in the church and that we should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered for the faith, saints. Now, the reason that our faith falters is because of our fears. Our fears grip us. Our fears grip our hearts and take us from the things of the Lord. But if our heart is fixed, I didn't say focused, I said, but my heart is fixed. The psalmist said, my heart is fixed on the Lord. I like to use Bible words. I like to use Bible verses. I like to use Bible verses. Because that's all we have is the word of God. That's what we can trust in. Trust the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not unto thy own understandings. And all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord. And depart from evil. Now look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. By the way, these are pastoral epistles. 1st, 2nd Timothy, and Titus. Look at verse 1 of chapter 3. This know also that in the last days, now again, last days, last times, perilous times, difficult times. Beloved, we're living in the last days. You are seeing, and we are seeing. A dress rehearsal for the coming Antichrist. Now, the spirit of Antichrist is not the Antichrist. But there's a man coming on the scene who everybody will bow down to. And they will worship this man. But we'll see in a moment. Uh, when that happens, I won't be here. I'll be gone. And so will you. But everybody's getting, I mean, we're, we're getting ready to, uh, the world is getting ready for him to come. Uh, stay six feet or two meters away from each other. Uh, wear masks. Don't wear masks. Put on a shield. I'm seeing people now with shields. Put on a mask. Some people maybe need to wear a mask. I don't know. 
Wash your hands. Well, that's hygiene. Wash your hands. Uh, social distance. Don't get too close. Unless, unless you're at the bar. Unless, unless you're going to get your fix from the marijuana stores. Who would have thought that we'd be living in a day where marijuana is legal? We'll get you some marijuana. That'll help you. But the problem with all those antiseptics, marijuana, alcohol, booze, pornography, gambling, all those vices, they don't satisfy. And you have to come down. And when you come down, you're even more empty than before you got in it. That's why Jesus saves. Jesus saves. Thank the Lord. Jesus satisfies. Jesus supplies. So we're living in these horrible days and people are getting ready. And all that will have to happen is we leave town. I'll show you that a little bit. We leave town when we leave. Now, now you are a buffer. I'm a buffer to my neighbors. They look at me and I have opportunity. I speak to them. And a couple of them have said, when I, when I, when I need you, I'll let you know. A sad thing about that is they may not have an opportunity to let me know. Do you understand that? That's why the Bible says, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So you and I are the buffer. We're the light. We're the bread. We're the water. We're the help to a lost and dying world that is on its way to hell. My wife spoke to someone recently over the phone. And, uh, and they were talking about this happened, that happened. And my wife began to talk to this person about the Lord. And they said, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Christians are that way. I don't want to hear it. I'll just stay away. And we'll just, do, we'll just go for a bike ride on Sunday. Sunday we'll go to the beach. We'll go to the park. Uh, we'll, go some, we'll go camping. We'll go on our boat. We'll go on our bike. We'll go on our motorcycle. We'll go something. But Sunday is the Lord's Day. Sunday is to rejuvenate us, to encourage us to get us out with the things of the Lord so that we can be a blessing to those who are lost. We're the only help. We're the buffers to what's going on when you know the truth. Jesus said you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Well, people are deceived. They're, they're swallowing this pill. with this epidemic. Businesses have clothes. Economies are in trouble. Some of you poor dear people have homes that you purchase that are no longer that price. The blessings of Fort McMurray for years, Mrs. Glenn and I thought for years, well, uh, our retirement will be the selling of our home. And one day we'll sell this home and that'll be our retirement. Well, that has dropped. People have lost thousands and thousands of dollars because of an environment and the environmentalists and a government that's gone crazy. Well, we don't want oil. Well, then pray tell, beloved, how are you going to get around without oil? You can ride your boat, you can ride your bike, you get a canoe, paddle your canoe. So it's a mess. But I'm trusting the Lord. I'm looking to Him. I'm depending on Him. Preacher, do you ever get discouraged? No. No, I get a little down sometimes. And you encourage me when you come to church. When you come to church, it encourages me. Like I said, people leave all the time. Sometimes it may be my fault because they don't want to hear what I'm preaching. And they don't want to hear the word of God. And that's true. And God's people who are not walking with God. Last week or two weeks ago, we were in Edmonton. Uh, went to see my surgeon, see how my hip's coming out. And they said I should be dancing in a couple weeks. And uh, that's not true. But we ran into some people that used to come to our church. They used to sit right over here. And the, one of those two people had a drinking problem. Bad drinking problem. And they just got fed up. And they decided we're going somewhere else. We don't have to hear about the pastor talking about wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, who serves to see their body is not wise. I'm a preacher! I'm supposed to preach the word in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Look at it, it's right there in chapter four. 
Verse 3, for the time will come, but the time is here, beloved. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, that's sound de teaching, but will after their own selves, after their own lust, and not, so, not necessarily as a sexual connotation, but my desires, should heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they should turn away their ears from the truth. And should be turned into fables. Now go back to chapter 3 and verse 1. Note this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men should be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. Gotta have it. Listen, if you work Sunday to make money, you're wrong. Sunday's the Lord's Day. Don't get mad at me now. You can get mad at me, I can take it. I'm a big boy. But Sunday's the Lord's Day. So don't get mad at me. But if you work Sunday for overtime, shame on you. Okay, I'm just saying that in Christian law. But Sunday's the Lord's Day. Tell your boss, I'm a Christian. I realize, I realize that if you work for the plants, that's another story because you're on a schedule. But those of you who don't have a schedule, you can tell your employer, I'm not working Sunday. Not in that attitude. But I'd like to have Sunday off. I need to go to church. I'll be a, I won't steal from you because I'm a Christian. You can mark it down. You can trust me, I'm a Christian. Hey, a Christian should not have to, now you need contracts and the world's corrupt, but as a Christian, people should just be able to trust you. But you can't trust Christians today because they'll steal from you. They'll lie from you. They steal from God every Sunday. How do they do that, preacher? They don't tithe. Tithes and offerings. Are you upset yet? Let's read on. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, verse 2, disobedient to parents. Boy, that's the day we're living in. You send your kids to school, that teaches them about socialism. By the way, Jim Jones preached socialism. And he had some communist background. Socialism, humanism, evolution, communism. All these things are being indoctrinated in your children. And then the music you listen to. I said this morning, I'm gonna, I had a whole bunch of trouble getting to church. Those little things were happening. And I knew that the devil was mad because he knew what I was preaching on this morning. And he didn't want me to preach it. And, uh, but when I think about uh, people who listen to what I have to say or what I don't have to say, uh, let me say this. Your music speaks to your mind. Music sets the heart. That's what the Bible says. Singing yourself in psalms, spiritual song, singing melody in your heart as unto the Lord. When you listen to that corrupt music, it tells you to deny your parents. It tells you to rebel against God. It tells you not to read your Bible. All that music. And then think about this. There was a woman by the name of Madeline Murray O'Hare. Anybody hear of her? Madeline Murray O'Hare. She was an atheist back in the 60s. And that one woman, now think about this. One man in Christ could set a thousand to flight. Two men in Christ, 10,000. That one woman went to the Supreme Court, an atheist, back in the 60s. Now, this is a long time ago. This is back when I had hair. In the 60s. And she said, we don't need Bibles in the school. We don't want prayer. Take prayer out of the school. And they did it. The Supreme Court, listen, Lawlessness is wrong. And what's happening in America and here in Canada, people are getting wrapped up and caught up in this BLM. What are those initials? You know what it is. Burning, looting, and murdering. And if you look at that Black Lives Matter, by the way, they have charters here in Canada and the United Kingdom and the U.S. And their whole agenda, look it up, don't take my word, look it up on the internet. Their whole agenda is, is Marxism, anarchy, anti-family, anti-God, anti-Christian, anti-Bible, and their agenda is to destroy America, and they're doing it. And they have big funding. They have over a billion dollars given them by celebrities, by sports figures, by billionaires, they're supporting those people who are destroyed. By the way, they're not for they're not for ethnicity. They're not for racism. They're for anarchy. That's what they're for. Read on it. Look it up. And the problem is many Christian people are getting wrapped up in that. Oh, 
If black lives mattered, beloved, now hear this, they wouldn't have murdered 20 million babies with abortion. If black lives mattered. The average black family, 75%, now listen to the statistic, 75% they don't have a daddy. You need a daddy. That's why sodomite is, sodomy is wrong. You need a man and a woman. It's the way God designed it. They're against that. They're for transvestites. And that's what they're propagating. Not one man, one woman for life to, to procreate and have. No, they're against that. So this spirit then of anarchy, anti-Christ, anti-God, I'm afraid that our people, Christian people, are getting caught up in that. They're getting caught up in that. Why? They're not walking with God. If you walk with God for one minute, for one minute, and read the signs they have. Read up the sign. We're going to destroy America. We're going to put out the cops. That's law. They don't want law. They want lawlessness. The things that are being passed in our country. Folks, we're living in the last days. And it's not a time to be fearful. It's not a time to quit. It's not a time to get up, give up. It's a time to stand up and to be counted for the Lord. And to be faithful to the things of the Lord. And to have your faith strengthened, not weakened. Simon, Simon, Jesus said, Satan had desired to sift me as wheat. That's what we're, we're being sifted. If we allow the world, they're sifting us. People say, be safe. Now that's good, be safe. All those women drivers, I understand that. Yeah, be safe. You say to your family, be safe. But I'm trusting the Lord. I'm washing my hands. I'm doing all that stuff. But I'm in church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Preaching two hour sermons. Amen. You didn't know that, did you, Ronnie? Two hours. <laughs> two hours. I won't call her name. Shouldn't call his name. Two hour messages, amen? Oh, that was very weak. <laughs> Oh, I just got this. I don't have my walker anymore. So, so I can stand and get with it, amen? I can preach it, amen? amen? Verse number three. I'm trying not to stop here, but I am for some reason. Unthankful. Unho are you thankful? Are you, are you grateful? Look at this bad boy. Look at that. I was given this by one of the rich families in our church. In fact, if you need a loan, I'll tell you what this family is. <laughs> They're not looking at me now. <laughs> but here you go. Look at this gift. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for every cup of coffee that I get. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm thankful that my precious wife decided to get us a caramel macchiato maker. An espresso maker. And it was broken. <laughs> All the way from it was broken. So we weren't going to get back to Edmonton until um, probably sometime the end of August. But one of our dear families, they were going, and they came up and said to me, Sunday night, do you need anything from Edmonton? I said, well, wow, <laughs> wow. Going to Edmonton. I said, yes. Go to the Italian store and get me some. So I said, this machine is broken. Can you take it back to Canadian Tire? And they did, but they didn't have any. So then I said, could you go an extra mile? There is another Canadian Tire up the road. And guess what? They brought us the espresso machine. I'm thankful. And my wife now has made my third one. Yesterday. Man, it was good. Ooh, it was good. Mm, mm. I'm thankful. Amen? Okay. Unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, no control, fierce, despises those that are good. Isn't that right? Down with the police. Well, who, pray tell, is going to protect you? You can't call 911. 
Because ain't nobody coming. How sick it is, beloved. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Here it is. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such, turn away. Now, go back to 1 John chapter 2. Overcoming the spirit of fear. Fear is a terrible thing to be afraid of. To live your life in fear. Jeremiah said, Be not afraid of the king of Babylon, of whom ye are afraid. Be not afraid of him, saith the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, that's Jehovah, the Lord of hosts. For I am with you to save you, to deliver you from his hand. Now think about that. And God has not given me or you or us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Now look again, at look at verse 15. Love not the world. I said this was a two-part message. This could be a five-part message. I have four pages here. I haven't got to the first page. Amen? Aren't you happy about that? 1 John 2, 15, love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not where? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, young people, the lust of the eyes, middle age, gotta have it, just gotta have one more toy. Can I get one more toy, please, dear? I want to buy a toy. Can I buy a toy? I've come to the place now where I don't care about toys anymore. Right? I can go to the store, I can buy just about anything I want for $1.50. But I'm not buying things. I'd like to buy things. I've been wanting to buy an Apple Watch for about a long time. But I just go there and I look at it and I put it back. Nothing wrong if you have one. Nothing wrong. In fact, your birthday's coming. Let me give you another thought. So, I, I, I don't care about things. Now, some things, yes. And then when you get to be old, the pride of life. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. It's not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God and by forever. Little children, it is the last time. This is all in the context here. So don't get caught up with the world. You see, the world will suck you in. And I'm afraid that many of our people are sucked in by the world. Wanting to be man pleasers, wanting to please the world. And what is your conversation about? Do you talk to them about Jesus? Do you tell them Jesus saves? You can't do it if you're if you're hanging around with worldly people and they don't want your Jesus. And by the way, if they don't want your Jesus, you, you should want them. If they don't want your Jesus, then you ought to get away from them. Someone says, when I get, become a Christian, will I lose my friends? You'll find out who your friends are when you become a Christian. But if you're for Christ, you come to church and you say, Amen, praise the Lord, bless me. Bless me. Speak to my heart. My heart is deceitful, Jeremiah said, desperately wicked above all things. Who can know? God knows the heart. And we come to church to get our hearts settled. Paul said, let us consider one another. I can't tell you how blessed I am this morning to see some of your precious faces. All of your faces, not some. That's bad. <laughs> I'm blessed. Some of you haven't been around for quite a long time. I still send you your memory verse daily, encourage you. But you blessed my heart. Do you think he blessed his heart even more? Let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. Not trouble, but good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the matter of summer, but exhorting one another, encouraging one another. Hey, the old man doesn't have his walker, now he's walking with the cane. <laughs> That's my flesh, excuse me. But he's got the cane. Amen? Amen. Watch out, I got the cane. <laughs> so, little children, is the last times, and as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are many Antichrists, whereby you may know this the last time. That's not talking about the Antichrist. That's the spirit that's against God, against Christ. Now here it is, verse 19. They went out from us. Now watch that. 
They went out from us. Who? The people who come to church and can't handle the preaching. I, I'm not a likable person, but I'm preaching the word of God. You ought to respect the office. I don't like our prime minister, but I respect the office. I pray for him. You may not like the U.S. president. You may not like what's going on over there, but I pray for them. I pray for the world every day. Countries specifically every day. Leaders every day. But they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. They went out that they might be manifest that they were not all of us. But you have an unction from the Holy One. That's the Holy Spirit. And you know all things. I've not written unto you because you know not the truth. Here it is. See, the world doesn't want to hear the truth. And many people don't want to hear the truth. Jesus said, you should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I want to hear the truth, not error. The problem is all the error that's being preached, propagated, propaganda. If you, if you listen to a lie long enough, you believe it. If you listen to a lie long enough, you get sucked into it. Who would have thought, who would have ever thought that one pandemic would shut the world down? Shut the world down. There has been pandemics years gone by, but it didn't shut down the world. But you see, there's a spirit of antichrist that is propagating and getting us ready. Who's behind it? Satan. Getting people ready for the tribulation. A seven year period. Now, I want to close, but I want to give you some encouragement before I close. Verse 21 says, I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, that and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. He that he is Antichrist that denied the Father and the Son. Now, Second Thessalonians and I'll be done. So this Second part will be tonight, Lord willing. Second Thessalonians. So I want to help you not to be fearful about the tribulation. Can somebody warm this up? It's cold. Just kidding. I'm just kidding. Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech your brother, now watch the wording here, and watch your Bible carefully. By the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by what? Our gathering together with him. So excited to see a young lady here. She's in the back. I won't call out her name. But her mom listens to my sermons. And her mom let me know when she went back to her country. She said, I learned a lot by being here. That blessed my heart. That totally blessed my heart and encouraged me because she's listening to the Word of God. And I have nothing but the Bible. I have the Bible. Faith comes by and hearing by the Word of God. And Satan wants to get you away from hearing the Word of God. If faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God, if you're not hearing the Word of God, what's happening? Your faith is being exchanged for fear. Faith becomes fearful when we're not walking with God. Now look in chapter 5, just one page over. 1 John, or 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, look at verse 9. Well, verse, uh, verse 6, Therefore let us not sleep as do others. I'm afraid many of God's children have gone to sleep. But let us watch and be sober. Watch, that's the word, watch, watch. And the Gospel of Mark, Jesus says more time, watch, 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 watch and pray. But let, uh, verse number um, seven, for they that are asleep sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunk in the night. But let us who are the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, what? The hope of salvation, why? Verse nine, but for God hath not given us the spirit of what? God has not given us the what? 
For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, remember, wherefore is a swinging door. What's been said, what's going to be said. Wherefore, comfort yourself together and edify one another, even as you do. Now in chapter 2 of 2 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brother, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, our gathering together unto him, that you, be not, that you be not soon shaken where? In your mind. So propaganda gets a hold of your mind. Paul said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon himself the form of a, of a servant, became a servant, the mind of Christ. So again, the spirit of Antichrist, the spirit of the world and conforming to the world will shape your faith and you'll live a life of fear rather than faith. or troubled neither by, see it, spirit. What does John say to us? The spirit of Antichrist. Getting ready. Hey, it'll take just that. We leave, and the world is in chaos. The world is in anarchy. The world is in confusion. And now he's going to step out on the stage. The Antichrist. He is going to be a genius. He's going to take care of the economy. By the way, you won't be able to buy anything if you're left behind unless you have the mark of the beast. He'll take care of all that. Uh, he'll take care of the military. He's going to help Israel. Once again, they're going to build that temple that's been destroyed so many times. He's going to build it for the Jew. And he's going to do the Jew and deceive the Jew, and they're going to lay down their arms. The Jews have now lost a war since 1948. And the three wars that they fought, they've won all of them. There's still three wars to be fought. The war of Psalms 83 could happen any moment, but even while we're here. Nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the, see it? Day of Christ is at hand. That's good news. The day of Christ is when Jesus comes. The day of the Lord is when judgment comes. Judgment or Jesus. Christ, heaven, no Christ, hell. That's man's choice. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day should not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin, who's that? Who's that man of sin? be revealed the son of perdition. That's the Antichrist, beloved. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that's what we are, beloved. How many of members of Emmanuel are not coming back? Oh, my soul! We've loved you. We've eaten with you. we fellowship with you. We've cared for you. We've married you. Buried your dead. Counseled with you. Encouraged you. You're not going to come back? Why don't you come back? Why don't you come back? Why don't you come out of your homes? The Bible says, men's hearts why? No faith. Faith has been shaken. You know, God protects babies. New babies are protected by God for several months. They're, they're like protected by the Lord. Who opposes and lifts all himself above all that is called God so that, so that, notice, or that is worship, so that, notice, so that he, as God, sitteth where? in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things. And now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of inequity doth already work. 
Only he, that's the Holy Spirit, who now let it, that word let, there is an old English word that means that hinders. You're playing tennis, you hit the ball and it hits the net. That's called a let serve. Will let until he be taken out of the way. And then show that, notice the capital W, that's a person. Then show that wicked one be revealed. Now the word one is not there, but that's, of course, the Antichrist. Who will be controlled by the dragon. The dragon is Satan. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. Hallelujah. And shall be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. That's Revelation 19, 15, where the Lord comes and out of his mouth is that two-edged sword. And the, he takes down the devil and the Antichrist. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness of them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. For this cause, now you think about this, beloved. You have loved ones, friends, acquaintances, companions who are lost. They're going through the tribulation. They don't get saved horrible time, the tribulation. And what's going to happen? I, I, I'll just put it off. When I get to be elderly, then maybe I'll become a Christian. You don't know that. For this cause, God shall send them. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they shall believe a lie. They might be damned that believe not the truth but have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now finish this tonight, and tonight we'll look at the Antichrist. Shall we stand together? Tonight we'll look at this personage that comes out of the sea. He's the Antichrist. He's Satan's man. He'll come out of the sea. Humanity. That's found in chapter 13 of Revelation. We'll look at him tonight. But my prayer for you this morning and for us as a church is that we're not swept away with the deception of the world. The world's lost. There's not going to be any revival in the world. There's no revival. You can be revived. I can be revived. And that's why the psalmist said, Well, thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice. We can be revived. You can go out of here this morning, and this is my prayer. You can leave here this morning and say, I'm standing for Jesus. We're standing for Jesus. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Lift high his royal banner that must not suffer loss. From victory. We're to live in victory, not defeat. The world's defeated. What did they know? They don't know anything. They're lost. They're blinded. They need someone like you and someone like me to live a true Christian life before them and tell them, would you like to know where you're going to spend eternity? And then be willing to take our Bible and show them. He died. He was buried. Who he, Jesus, he rose again from the dead, shed his blood, paid for your sins came back from the dead and went back to heaven. And now in heaven, he's ready to intercede on your behalf if you'll call on the Lord. That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty simple. Pray that God would give us boldness to speak to our neighbors, our loved ones. That we'd be refreshed this morning. Some people just got back from holidays and they had a refreshing time. And so you kind of go away for a while. And then you come back. But don't ever go away from the Lord. Never take a holiday from the Lord. And may God help us this morning to pray and to walk with Jesus and to be the type of a Christian that honors Christ. That's my prayer for our church, that we're not deceived and caught up with the propaganda, getting us ready, marching in a straight line. Here's just march together here. Okay, I got a shot for you. I'm not taking the shot. Who knows what's in the shot? I'm not taking the shot. You like people to boss you around? I don't like people to boss you. You like people to boss you around? Then don't get married. <laughs> You're a boss. Your wife's a boss. We're a boss. We all have a boss. I have a boss. You have a boss. But I'm not going to let the world boss me around. I'm going to let Jesus be my Lord. And let him guide and direct my life. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. God's people praying. Are you saved this morning?
this August morning. You know Jesus is your Savior. He died today, the 9th of August, the 222nd day of 2020. Are you going to heaven? If you know that, say amen with an uplifted hand. Yes, I know that I'm going to heaven. My sins are forgiven. My name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. Would you raise your hands? I know I'm saved. Heaven's my home. I know that. Amen. Thank you for that. You may take them down. Now, I don't know that, preacher. I'm not sure if I die today, I'd go to heaven. I'd like to know. I'm not sure. I have some doubt. And by the way, staying away from the Bible, staying away from the Lord and the Lord's people, that's where the doubt comes in. Why? Because you're not reading the Word of God. You're not being strengthened. You're not growing in the things of the Lord. Preach and pray for me. I'm not sure if I die, I'd go to heaven today. If I die today, I'm not looking forward to dying, but if I die today, I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. Just something like that. Call on the Lord. He will save you. For whose service shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. And then, finally, preacher, pray for me that I'll stand. Pray for me that these days, these last days, that I'll stand. Pray for me. Pray that I'll stand for Jesus and stand with him and stand with others. Pray for me. That's my desire. I want to stand. I don't want to slumber. I don't want to slip. I don't want to step away. I want to stand. Pray for me. Pray for me. God bless you all. Lord. Father, we thank you for the morning. Thank you for this time to preach. And Lord, I thank you for people who prayed for this old man. My leg is getting stronger. I'm doing the exercise and doing all I can to get back on my feet. And Lord, thank you that I can stand behind this pulpit this morning and preach this precious, infallible, inerrant, inspired book, the Bible. And oh God, the world is trying to shake our faith. And in many cases, they have shaken our faith some that they're fearful. Not walking in faith, but walking in fear. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, a sound mind. Strengthen us this morning, Lord, is my prayer. Strengthen our resolve, O oh God. Give us holy boldness to speak for you, to speak on your behalf. Pulling up the sinner, pushing up the saint, and encouraging others. Will thou not revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? Lord, we can be revived as a people, individuals. We can be revived and then go out and encourage someone. Oh, God, so many need encouragement. Standing behind the door, they need to come out from the door. They need to come out from their homes. They need to come back to this place of worship. May that be so. Dismiss us in thy blessings, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good day. God bless you. Thank you.